Now we want to consider, we want to define and analyze some more physical concepts and see how they fit into the Minkowski geometry picture. Uh, the next things we want to really talk about are speed and distance. Um, but we want to be careful to not misuse the idea of time. We want to make sure we only use this thing that we know is meaningful, which is the proper time measured by some observer for what they're actually doing. And not try to, what we'll, what we'll discover very soon is that different people analyzing each other tend to have different measurements of time. Um, so almost all the pictures I ever draw are space-time pictures, but I want to draw a couple of pictures of a very special, situ or a special situation to try to, uh, to set up a very crucial experiment about speed. And then that's going to give us notions of speed and distance um, through using light. So here's what we do. We have a bunch of identical meter sticks. So here's a meter stick. Here's another meter stick. Here's another meter stick. And they're going to be moving relative to each other. And that's certainly something we can detect. We can see relative motion. It's not too hard to convince yourself that that's an absolute notion. Um, then what I do is I look at um, this meter stick and this meter stick are moving relative to each other. And this guy sends out a flash of light from the backside. OK, so a little flash of light. Light wave propagates this way. And this guy uh, maybe sees a, a similar light wave. And what I measure is how long does this person, so there's an observer, let's say, A, riding with this meter stick, and observer B here, and observer C, each riding with these meter sticks. And they, they detect in their own proper time how long did these light pulses take to traverse their meter stick. So observer A sees how long did his light pulse tr take to traverse his meter stick. Observer B sees this light pulse m uh, emitted by somebody's moving relative to him. And he measures in his own proper time how long it takes for that light beam to go an identical distance. And these are identical meter sticks. And observer C is going to also observe how long. And he's moving at maybe some different relative velocity. And if, you know, uh, if you've heard anything about relativity, you know the, the very surprising punchline, which is they all measure exactly the same amount of time that observer A thinks it takes um, about three nanoseconds to, for this light beam to traverse his meter stick. And observer B agrees that it takes um, the same amount of time to traverse the same amount of distance, even though this was emitted by something that was moving relative to him. If this were something that shot out a bullet, that just totally wouldn't be true. We know from our Newtonian observations that that just is never true for things that are not moving at the speed of light. Okay. And so that's a fundamental ob observation that people make. It's related. It's, it's, this is sort of a, a drastically oversimplified version of the famous Michelson-Morley experiment, which I'm not going to say anything more about because I'm not really so interested in a historical derivation of the ideas of relativity. But the big punchline, which is you know, probably the most famous axiom of relativity, is that the speed of light is the same to all observers. Now, it's not the first time we've mentioned light as being special. We already uh, postulated, or you could say we already observed from certain experiments, that um, light travels along null lines. We knew it was special for the geometry. But this tells us another reason it's special. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around. I postulated meter sticks for a little bit there and essentially a very uh, primitive notion of measuring distance. But it actually is very elegant if you just take this, do a few length measurements and a few time measurements to get this fact that the speed of light is the same for all observers. And now we're going to turn around and we're actually going to define distance using light. Or you could think, so you can think bouncing lasers, or you can think bouncing radar waves, any kind of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, And so um, using the idea of time, remember we know we have the idea of proper time. That's built into 
um, the geometry and the physics. And then if you know that the speed of light is this universal constant, you can use time to define distance. Okay. And in fact, that's what they do in terms of uh, the SI, modern SI system of units. Okay, so here's the situation. Here's the, now we're going to go back to space-time pictures. Okay, um, what we're going to do, let's see. Um, I think I have enough room here. We have two observers or two material particles, and they're not moving relative to each other. So that means they're parallel lines, okay? So they're parallel lines in space-time. Again, I'm thinking in two dimensions, but none of this really is all true in three, four, or five dimensions, whatever. Okay. Um, and so event P is on A's world line. And so that's when A shoots out a photon. Remember, that goes along a null line. Then that hits at Q and bounces off immediately and then ends up at point R. And so these dotted lines are photons, and then these guys are material particles, so they're uh, straight lines, they're unaccelerated observers, they're straight lines in the time-like direction. Okay? And what I am going to do is I'm going to define the distance in such a way uh, using this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the speed of light is equal to 1. Because mathematicians don't particularly like using uh, universal constants and units and things like that when they don't have to. And it's most elegant to define the speed of light to be 1. In fact, I've really al already almost uh, d swept that under the rug um, when I defined the Minkowski scalar product without any kinds of constants like C in it. But um, we're just going to make that an axiom at this point. We know it's the same. We might as well use that as our unit of, of basic unit of speed. And it's a very common thing physicists do as well. Okay. So if that's going to be true, what we're going to do is we're going to define the distance between these two objects. Notice it's not a distance between two events. It's a distance between two parallel lines. So this is a line-to-line -line distance. And we can use it to define the distance between two events eventually, but it's, it's nice to do this. The distance between those two lines is going to be um, one-half of the proper time lapse from P to R. So if something is traveling at speed one in both directions, then however long it takes for the signal to go out and come back in, that should be double the distance. So we take half of the time lapse and we define that to be the distance. It's very, very elegant. Okay. Um, and one interest, important thing is that this, there's going to be other notions of like coordinate distance and x, x quant x, x, x's and y's and things like that that might differ from this. But this is really the notion that's most analogous to the distance between these two lines is defined in Euclidean geometry. Okay, so here's another thing we can define using the same picture. Um, we can define simultaneity. And that's another thing that is very unexpected in relativity, that this is a relative notion, but it's not going to be unexpected at all in analogizing to um, a Euclidean geometry. So let me talk about how we define it, and we'll see the analogy in a little bit. So simultaneity, if I, uh, if I send off this laser pulse at P, and then it gets to Q, and then it comes back to R, I'm sitting on observer's A world line. I'm observer A, and I want to know what event along my world line do I think is simultaneous with Q? If I say, ah, now the, P, the laser pulse has reached B and is going to be turning back, I would say it's going to be halfway in between. Okay, So it should be about halfway in between. Let's call that O. Okay, So the claim is that it makes sense to say that O, halfway in between, is an event that's simultaneous with Q. So let me put in a different kind of dotted line. Actually, that's not picture's not working out very well. It's okay. This dotted line should be slightly st tilted upward. It, it shows a little bit tilted upward in, in your screen, but it's, um, it should be tilted a little upward because this guy's tilted sideways because we're going to discover something very nice about the geometry here in a minute. So um, this dotted line is all the events that are simultaneous with O and Q. And so that is this observer A's and B's also, A and B's notion of sort of a pure space direction. That's as opposed to the world lines themselves, which are pure time. Because according to A, if I look at P and R, they're in the same place according to A. They're just him. If I think of him as the center of the universe, then this, these two events are both at the origin in terms of space. And they're different, different in time, 
but the difference between uh, P and R is just pure time motion according to A. Similarly, we, we've now defined is what are all the events that according to say event O and observer A, what are the things that A thinks of as happened at, happening at the same time as O? Q happened at the same time as O, something over here, something over here, something over here. And the fact is that's going to differ for different observers. It's not going to be something that other people agree on. If you have another observer that's moving through this event O, but let's say observer C, that is uh, moving through that same event, but, but it has a relative velocity to A, then it turns out he's not going to uh, agree on that. Okay, So that is very, very important. Um, so let's see. What else do I want to do? Um, yeah, so what we're doing is we're setting up coordinates. Now, this, that, that thing's getting really busy. I can finally erase all this stuff. Okay, so I can say a little bit more precisely or concisely what I mean by pure time and pure space. So, for example, here's O, okay, and this deserves to be the t-axis for observer A. So he can set up a coordinate system, and he's going to say that's the time axis because all these events are just different times that I was, uh, just different events that I was at in different times, but he doesn't think he's moving in space. Then what we then discover is that there's this natural way to set up all the events that are simultaneous to O. Those are, that's going to be the x-axis. Those are things where A, the observer A thinks those are a different space location, but all happening at the same time. Okay? And the way that was set up, again, was this picture oops, that's just R, by beaming uh, a light beam off there. Okay. So let me talk about the very nice relationship of x and t. One thing you might have noticed is that in, a, in the last video or two, I haven't really talked much about the actual scalar product. I've just been talking about magnitudes. And here, it doesn't seem like I've been talking about much of anything, OK, in terms of the geometry. But it turns out it, it relates very nicely. So let's let this vector, O, R, let that vector be U, and this vector be V. So the u is purely in the time direction, v is purely in the, in the x direction, the space direction, according to observer A. And then op here is minus u, okay? Because these, remember, o is defined to be halfway between the emission and the reception of the, the radar signal. Okay, and what do we know? The key thing is that v minus u, which is this vector here, and v plus u, which is this vector here, if you actually do it. That's the difference between v and minus u, so it's v plus u. They are both null vectors. Okay, And so it's going to be very a very smart thing to take the quadratic form applied to those guys. We can do it both at once with plus or minus. Okay, That's v plus or minus u, v plus or minus u. Okay, foil that out, you get Q of V uh, plus or minus 2 inner product V with U and Q of U. And that's equal to 0. Now, this is where it's really nice that it's plus or minus. I've got this quantity has to equal 0 regardless of whether this is a plus or a minus. So it can't change when this is a plus or minus. So this guy has to equal 0. That's a very, very important thing. Surprise, surprise, you might have guessed it from the way I was drawing these pictures. Surprise, surprise, time is orthogonal to space. And I, that's really important that those are relative notions. The time di dimension, the time direction, according to A in space-time, is orthogonal precisely to the space direction according to A, when I define these in this very reasonable way using laser, laser bouncing. Okay, So that's one thing. Time is orthogonal to space. And then Q of V and q of u, oh, this is a minus, right? Um, oh, no, that's right. q of v and q of u have to be equal and opposite, because the sum of them has to equal 0. So let me just put that up here. q of u equals minus q of v, OK? So in other words, they are equal and opposite. That makes sense that they should have different signs. This is time-like. This is space-like. 
And so they're going to have opposite signs when I look at u with u and v with v. And their magnitudes have to be equal. Well, surprise, surprise, the, um, the, this is the time lapse. This guy is the proper time lapse. That was our fundamental link between the geometry and the physics. This measures the lapse of proper time between this O event where uh, observer A thinks, aha, now observer B, I'll draw that in, has got the, the pulse and is, is shooting it back, and the event where he gets it back. So this is observers A, observer A's judgment of how long it takes for the pulse to get from Q to R. And magnitude of V, well, we haven't had a meaning yet for the magnitude of a space-like vector yet. But what should this be? This is the time lapse to get for a, a pulse of speed one to get from observer B back to observer A. And if that has speed one, that should also be the distance. Okay. So what this means is that the length of this vector V The length, we now have a notion for the length of vector v if v is space-like. What is that significant? It's got to have a physical significance. If there's such a tight link between geometry and physics, what we say, let me put it down here, magnitude of a vector, a space-like vector v equals the, um, the length of the vector as measured by an observer who thinks uh, its tip and tail are simultaneous. And it's really important that simultaneous, yeah, there you go. okay. It's really important that the magnitude of a vector is definitely a more complicated gadget when you don't have this special situation, okay? So if I have a space-like vector, I need to ask, and I want to think of it as a space length, then I have to ask an observer who thinks it's tip and tail are simultaneous. Or in other words, an observer whose direction in space and time is orthogonal to the vector that I'm trying to analyze, okay? So that is, that kind of completes the link between the Minkowski magnitude, the geometric concept, and the physics that for a time-like vector, it measures time, proper time, as measured by somebody who's really going, doing this trajectory in space and time. Magnitude of a space-like vector, a little more subtle. You have to measure, you have to first find an observer who's orthogonal to that, for whom this looks like it's pure in, purely in the space direction. And if you want to really test that, you can set up this kind of laser ranging kind of thing. Um, but you don't have to once we've got this derivation done. Um, you ask that observer, how far do you think these two events are? Okay, how far, or in other words, if I set up two parallel lines that go, here's this observer and here's another observer that's not moving relative to him, and I ask that observer, how far apart do you think these two people are? Then that's going to be the magnitude of that space-like vector. Okay, so we're going to continue with these ideas but that's a good place to stop um, now that we've got that link and that significance of the space-like magnitude.